Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. Today in the continuation of our series on Apache Spark Deep Dive, today we'll discuss a very interesting uh, concept. What we have here is hash partitioner in the Apache Spark world. Uh, this is one of the two partitioner, partitioners provided by the Apache Spark, uh, hash partitioner and the range partitioner. And we'll look in this video in detail how hash partitioning uh, is uh, worked upon in the Apache Spark world. So guys, let's start. So there are two partitioners provided by Spark. Uh, one is the hash partitioner and another one is the range partitioner. So I'm not going in on the lines where I would say that that hash partitioner is the default partitioning or default partitioner or the default partitioning mechanism. We'll discuss uh, later in this video why I'm saying it's not default. So as part of today's topic, we'll discuss in detail how hash partitioner works. So let's create uh, uh, a RDD, a data set quickly. Here I have created a data set uh, using this. So I have created six, six records and uh, this is this eight is the number of partitions. So I have while creating this RDD I has given eight as the number of partitions. And when I printed this RDD, these are the six records that I have. Now let's see how these six records get partitioned, partitioned under the hood. Now let's check what is the partitioner used by the Spark. If I run this command rdd dot partitioner, it gives me none, right? So there is no partitioner as it's saying. So what does it mean? I gave it uh, the number of partitions at, as eight. And if I do part rdd dot get num partitions, it shows me eight partitions. Then what is the default partitioner? Then how the data is getting partitioned? which default partitioner is used? That's a question, right? So let's try to understand it from the fact that uh, when we are trying to do the partitioning in any distributed world, uh, it is meant to split that data into multiple buckets so that each bucket or each set of records can be individually processed in a distributed world. So depending on the source, it is done either you will take the number of records or size of that uh, data uh, may not be absolutely structured in the form of records, but maybe then you're playing on the size of the chunk of data and then you'll present, you'll, you'll put it consecutively on the underlying nodes uh, in the cluster available to you. So as such, there is no partitioner uh, required to do that. Uh, Similar stuff is happening in Apache Spark uh, when we have not mentioned any partitioner uh, mentioned or not explicitly mentioned any partitioner. Uh, Spark is just taking into account the number of records and putting individual records onto the individual nodes on the consecutive nodes. And once you will finish to the range of the nodes available in the cluster, it will again come back to the first node and try to split it in this fashion, kind of a round robin. The concept of hash partitioner comes uh, only in the cases where we have paired RDDs. That means we already have uh, keys defined there and that key can be used to find out the hash code and uh, hash partition can work on that. So, what we can say from this discussion is default partitioning scheme in Apache Spark world is none because partitioning is not applicable to all the RDDs. For operations which require partitioning on a pairwise RDDs, like operations like you know reduce by key, uh, aggregate by key, then in that case we have a key which can be used to find out the hash code, and based on that hash code hash partitioning would become the default partitioning. Guys, I hope uh, you get this concept. Again, I'm reiterating the concept of hash partitioning or hash partitioner comes into the fact when we are talking about paired RDDs or we are doing some operation on keys because to find out the hash code, we need a key for that particular record. By default, uh, the partitioning scheme is none. The distributed system based on the number of records or 
the size of the data will distribute the data on the consecutive nodes in the round robin fashion okay so now let's try to apply the hash partition so this is a code snippet and before we apply the hash partition i've written a small uh, utility or helper function to find out the number of uh, elements per partition so this is the code snippet to find out the number of elements number of records per partition we are taking input as our rdd which is we have created int and none type uh, the data set that we have created and then we are using this api of map partition and finding out the length of the uh, elements in on that particular partition size of number of elements on that particular partition and if i run that api on the rdd which i have created i'll see that uh on first partition i have zero elements on second partition i have one element on third partition i have one element on fourth partition i have one element so i only had six records but i have eight partitions so two partitions are empty and else rest six uh, six partitions have one element each so this is how it will look distribution looks on each node uh so we had eight partitions this is empty and rest six records or six elements are on six different partitions for this particular rdd that we created right so this api will help us find out the number of elements per partition let's move forward now let's try to apply the hash partition at this time let's try to partition the rdd that we have created earlier using uh explicitly using the hash partition and we are trying to create hash partition this one is the number of partitions we want to create so we had eight partitions now we have converged into a single partition there is a single partition that is created partition by a new hash partition number of partitions one so how it worked it fetch uh, all the different partitions and moved it into a single bucket into a single partition now let's try to understand hash partitioner how a hash partitioner is working under the hood if i try to do the hash partition partitioning this time with partition number as 2 and if i try to find out the number of elements per partition number of elements in single partition would be 6 all 6 elements were in single partition previously now we have two partitions and if you see in the first partition we have two elements and in the in the, in the second partition we have four elements how it it's how it is done this is not evenly distributed like right so how hash hash partitioning is working we'll see in a bit what is the algorithm it uses so but uh, if we have created two hash partitions based on some algorithm it try to find out the hash code for the key right and then based on that it has it it uh, there is a modulo modulo 2 and try to create two buckets and put the six packets into two buckets so first first bucket first partition got two packets two elements and uh, second bucket got four elements and this is how the two partitions are created if i if you see here closely what has happened and I'll, i'll explain the algorithm but what has happened is these two partitions with key as one and these two partitions with key as 3 uh, has has gone to partition number 2 while these two partitions with key as 2 are in partition number 1 so let's see how these num packets are decided so what it does under the hood it calls the hash function uh, on the key and then modulo it with the number of partitions so if i try to do the same uh, apply the same same algorithm on this data set i've taken we because we have keys as 1 2 and 3 right six elements uh, two elements each of uh, each of the keys 1 2 and 3 and if i try to find it out k is my key right k dot hash code is a hash code for that key and i try to do the k dot hash code percentage uh, modulo 2 so these are the vectors created 
for key number one hash code is one and hash code modulo two is also one and key number three also the k hash code modulo one is coming modulo two is coming as one as well so these two pieces are going to the same bucket and same partition and this one here it is coming as zero so this is going to the partition number zero and these two are going to the partition number one so that is the algorithm under the hood how hash partitioner uh, calculates or find out the partition of bucket right so this is in a nutshell how hash partitioner works and if i eventually again call the hash partitioner with partition numbers as seven this time uh, the same algorithm would be calculated and if we see these two partitions this time partitions with key one and two are going into partition zero <coughs> and partitions with key as three are going to the separate partition based on the same algorithm we discussed and when we call the same I, uh, api to count the elements per partition it shows us that so this time we had three partitions created right so on the first partition we had two elements on second partition we had two elements and on third par 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 uh, partitions also we have two elements correct so when we did a uh, hash partition with number of partitions as seven three partitions are created okay now let's try to draw out the conclusion so what we have seen in this video that hash partition now takes a single argument and which is the number of partitions we want to create values are assigned to partitions uh, using the hash function for that particular key and like we have seen for smaller integer values like 1 and 1 2 and 3 uh, hash value of uh, these keys are also the same so like hash of 1 is 1 hash of 2 is 2 hash of 3 is 3 for your son and uh, depending on the language uh, different hash code algorithms are used for Scala RDDs hash code functionality function is used for data sets we use murmur hash 3 and for PySpark we have portable hash uh, the important thing that we need to take into account that for doing the hash partitioning partitioning uh, the keys that we are choosing should be hashable right for instance if we are trying to hash an RDD of array and that will not work because uh, it will take into account uh, the index values of arrays not the content of array so keys has to be hashable another very important concept is hash partitioner is neither injective nor surjective uh, that means uh, there are no constraint in terms of which all keys can come to a single partition or not so multiple keys can be assigned to single partition and at the same time uh, some of the partition may be empty so it, it doesn't try to do any sort of uniformity across based on the algorithm the buckets are calculated and then those particular records uh, data chunks are moved into that a very important concept to understand is that be it hash partitioner or any sort of partitioner it will definitely shuffle the data across um, unless you, know, you, you are using the partitioning reusing the partitioning uh, between different operations and different transformations it will not reduce the amount of data to be shuffled and you have to be really smart if you're trying to do some kind of custom partitioning so that you use the same hair hash partitioner like we shown in a video where we try to do the joints without shuffle uh, unless and, and otherwise I mean it will always uh, shuffle the data and uh, the, it's, it's not uh, it would not happen that uh, the amount of data would be reduced the shuffle data would be reduced it will never happen so guys that's it in this very interesting topic about hash partition in apache spark thanks for watching have a good day bye bye